Hello and welcome to Sobirov's Law Firm YouTube channel and all other social media channels that we broadcast to. My name is Rahmat Sobirov and I'm privileged to welcome you all and my guest Mirshot Shakirov from United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us today, my friend. Uh, it's great to see you in Toronto. And we will be talking about doing business internationally, the challenges, the opportunities in the current world. Welcome, Rashad. Thank you very much. So let's start with quick introduction. Why don't you tell us who you are and where you do business? How come you became an entrepreneur? I was from a middle class family. I would probably say a lower middle class family where you know, we really had to do things on our own. We, we just had to rely on our, on our own in terms of finance, in terms of you know, um, future growth or like based on that, the circumstances made me discover this uh, entrepreneurship in me. Okay. Well, and I've discovered so many things in myself because of the circumstances. Because you know, sometimes when you don't have choice, you start, you know, trying so many things at the same time. Um, you know, you go through a trial and error, error period, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, you, you know, end up uh, having lots of mistakes, but uh, you get what you get, or what, what, uh, what's the best for you yeah. at the end of the day. So that is how I started the entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, but my dream was to be, my childhood dream was to be a di diplomat, mm -hmm. to represent my country. I always like to travel all around the world, um, well, to, to learn other languages, well, to, uh, you know, to, I always wanted to study uh, in so many different universities. I'm, I'm talking about my childhood dream, yeah. okay? Yeah. And, uh, I would say uh, I have uh, probably achieved that mm -hmm. when I used to work at uh, United Nations headquarters in New York at the Department of General Assembly Affairs branch. Okay. So uh, that was the place where the top diplomats all, of all around the world uh, would gather well, for plenary meetings, for general debates and etc. And I was a part of that uh, society mm -hmm. for, for the for the period where um, uh, I used to work at UN headquarters in New York. And uh, that was a diplomacy that I really, really wanted. But later on, you know, it seemed to me a very, you know, like, how to say, it's the same routine. Mundane job. Kind of. A very... Because I, I really wanted to create things. You know, I really wanted to uh, create projects that is useful to the society, that I could... And then I realized that this job would not make me... Uh, would not take me to the destiny which I dreamed of. Mm -hmm. So your childhood dream of becoming a diplomat, once it's realized, you, be you became aware that this is not really what you want. Once I started feeling myself as a, I'm a robot, that I'm just, uh, you know, following those uh, protocols, I cannot add something, I cannot initiate something, I cannot change the system if I want to. So these things, these restrictions uh, made me think of changing my, you know, uh, way of uh, growth. So then I switched. <coughs> I would say I switched back to entrepreneurship. So let's start with diplomacy. You graduated one of the top of the class. You became a diplomat at the United Nations in New York. You, you had this very, uh, very international uh, job. What did you learn in that job that later on was useful for you or you applied in practice of entrepreneurship? I got a clear answer for myself that nothing is impossible because that was my dream job. I tried my best and I achieved it. The moment I achieved it, then I wanted something more, right? So that's number one thing, number one insight that I got from that, that nothing is impossible. You can reach, you can achieve that with the help of Allah, of course, yeah, yeah. but with uh, uh, working hard. Number two, negotiation skills, which is very, very important in business too. Another important thing I would say, 
being able uh, to do public speaking. You know, Definitely. when you're not, uh, when you're not afraid of camera, mm -hmm. when you're not afraid of audience, that's very important. You know, and that brings you a self confidence. When you are self confident in business and entrepreneurship world, your partners would definitely pay attention to that uh, part of it. Mirshad, can you describe what kind of business you're involved now? Not like, like fa fast forward many years, now you are in an entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship world again after right. being a diplomat. So what do you do now in terms of business? Where you do your businesses with? Or who do you do your businesses with? In what sectors you do business? So. It's quite multinational, I would say. Uh, it's because uh, because of the types of the projects that I've been dealing with, the people who I've been dealing with, my partners, and etc. Uh, I've got um, American partners. I've got uh, Indian partners. I've got Chinese partners. I've got Korean partners. I've got Uzbekistani partners. I've got Russian partners. So. It's all, all, if you put them together, we were, we're talking about uh, at least five, six countries, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And each partner would, uh, would be associated with certain projects. Yeah. So, uh, well, to name those projects, it's textile, home textile production, mm -hmm. it's logistics business, well, especially uh, trucking business. The third one is the engineering, machinery, supply, and building factories and etc. The fourth one is development project, real estate and development project. And the fifth one, uh, it's a hospitality. Okay. So these are the five uh, directions that we, uh, we have been working on and uh, we are planning to expand them. Can you tell us, for an entrepreneur to go international, do you have any me specific methodology? What do you look for in a foreign market? Uh, first of all, I think uh, the most important thing in any business is sales. Whatever you do, whatever you start, you manufacture, you do marketing, whatsoever. The final thing, the final important point is the sales. If, you have, if your business has uh, well, if your business has sales, then you're successful. Mm -hmm. If not, forget it. I see. It's a it's waste of time, hard. waste of money, no matter how much, you know, your, your brand is popular, you're, no matter how much you have invested, you know, no matter how much, what, like how quality products you, you are offering to the market, right? Uh, if there is no sale, forget about this business. And where does this sale come from? You need to be very, you know, uh, to start anything, to start, to start the first steps, um, I would say um, you need to see if there is a demand in the market. If there is a demand in the market, then only then you start talking about the rest. Does that bring you to the necessary level of research, the depth of your research you do? before entering any markets, right? Of course, yeah, okay. of course. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you need to realize that there is a demand. Okay. And there are sometimes, sometimes there is a hidden demand. What when I say mean? hidden demand, I mean like people even don't know that they need it. Isn't it risky to discover that? It is always risky. Too it risky. Always, uh, well, to me and to anyone else. Mm. Just imagine Apple iPhone, that was a hidden demand. Tesla, based on hidden demand. Mm. No one would ever think that there might be a phone where you can touch the screen and you can scroll it and you can zoom in, zoom out. Yeah. No one would, uh, there was no demand that for that. created a totally different market in, exactly. in the world, right? Apps and so on. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. He so this is, I call, hidden demand. Mm -hmm. So if you're clever enough, if you're innovative, if you're talking about some kind of innovative product, usually there is a possibility there is a hidden demand in the market. Mm -hmm. If you have that, uh, that either hidden demand or you know, <clears throat> obvious demand, then based on that, you start taking further actions. And then you check the cash flow in the market, how strong the currency in that market, 
Okay, is there any loopholes in the country? You know, like in terms of law, how the rule of law working in the country? And I check the banking system. How easy it's to withdraw money from the bank? Okay, how easy to transfer money out of the country and bring money into the country? What is the control of the taxation agency? What is the VAT tax, value added tax? And what is corporate tax? Yeah, what custom, is income tax? Customs, fees, customs everything. fees, everything all together, right? So we have to call brokers, you know, if we if we want to find out about the customs and duties and etc. There are certain countries like UK, US, Canada, Australia, where you can easily get the information online. It's public. Every single thing is public. But you have to travel there. Yeah. You have to physically be there. Okay, you can have a bunch of papers in your hand, but you have to make sure you have to travel to that country, mm -hmm. go to that market, walk there. Spend some time. Spend there. some time, eat their food, talk to their people, spend their money, touch their money. Only then, only then you can really feel the taste of that country. That's a dilemma usually. I, I, I see where you're coming from. Many of my uh, clients, they all, always say, can I not just visit exploratory visits? There are certain immigration programs that require you to visit the, the communities, the right. areas before you even invest. That's the very valid point you made. It's, it's proven by the government. But there are certain clients from certain countries they, they are, it's not easy for them to get a visa, to even to travel, to see the place. I do understand that's a dilemma. Uh, however, uh, COVID has helped us, uh, or maybe has trained us, to get the information, uh, to be more kind of, um, uh, to get information remotely, to be able to, you know, uh, to advance our skills um, working with the internet, yeah. all right? And as I've just said earlier, that, uh, Canada, US, UK, mainly um, all the information available online, they're public, yeah. right? And there are lots of business cases w where you can read all the cases, you know, like, uh, uh, like pff, if they want to invest in certain business, what they understand. First of all, my biggest advice, do not invest in the business which you do not understand. Yeah, of, of course. <laughs> That's such an important thing in, in, in starting business or investing your money, right? I had those mistakes. I'm talking about the mistakes that I've gone through myself, like many years ago, mm -hmm. yeah? It took me, it took me so much time um, and so much money, it cost me so much money, in order to enter that industry. May I ask what industry was that? It was textile. Textile. <laughs> How much this, did, did this lesson cost you? Somewhere between 250000 up to $400,000. Just uh, one mistake. I wouldn't say one mistake. It's a collection of b mistakes <laughs> together. Because as I said, like I, I didn't understand textile at all. Mm -hmm. and. Overall, uh, the entry cost was up to $400,000. Now you've made the mistake, now you learned the lesson. Do you now understand textile? Of course yeah. I do. I, I understand it very well now. <laughs> it cost me a lot more than London Business School MBA yeah. or Executive MBA. Yes. You know, yes. it was twice or three times more expensive. Yes. But um yeah it's okay i mean we've gone through it it's in the past so but now you know as a person who has gone through that i i am strongly recommending not i mean to stay away from the business which you don't understand at least you need to have a partner who is mature in that who's like very experienced in that and if that partner has your credibility well, I mean, you, you, you trust uh, in him. In your business, what challenges do you see in, that relates to immigration, that relates to foreign workers, or any labor force talent? There is a deficit of professionals, I think, in every country at the moment. Every developed economy. 
Yeah, uh, in every developed country, it's it's a uh, it's a number one issue. And uh, you know, I've been mentioning about this problem uh, to myself and to my friends and partners. The biggest problem of the current and next century would be HR problem. First of all, the mindset of people are changing. Mm. The workers do not want to work as much as you know as 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 they used to work before. The next generation. Next generation, I'm yeah. talking about. Well, current generation, uh, the previous generation, they are amazing. I mean, they well, we we keep using them. I mean, or well, using their potential, their ability, and uh, it, it's it, we work as a team. But unfortunately, many uh, younger generation, next generation, they don't want to work. They don't. They have got different mindset. They want to make millions. Without working hard, without, without getting their, skills, yeah. without getting experience, yeah. like you are a lawyer, right? Yeah. And uh, not everyone can be a lawyer, mm. right? Mm. As professional as you are. Mm. Everyone wants to be, but they cannot be, mm. right? And that's why you build a team with different interests of people. So you unify them. You're not just a lawyer, you are a manager, first of all. Yeah. You know, uh, that's very important. Yeah, HR is, is affecting across the board on any industry, on any level. Believe me, it's, a, it's going we, we to be the biggest too. problem. How do you see North America going forward as we see the world is changing so rapidly? The business environment, the geopolitics and so on. I can say that in one word, in one sentence, the world is in danger. You know, economic... Uh, stability in danger in terms of uh, political stability and uh, so uh, this is uh, what I can say what, what's gonna happen to the United States <laughs> nothing is not gonna, nothing is gonna happen to the United States why no I mean this these countries like US UK Canada these countries um, are built in the way the foundation and the uh, the foundation is built in the way that uh, it's 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 not destroyable. Well, the economy overall, yes, there might be some you know ups and downs and etc. But uh, UK will never lose its place uh, from top ten for the next twenty five years. US will never uh, step down from number three. Let's say. Yeah, well, it will be in top three anyway. When I said uh, that nothing's going to happen to the United States, I just said in general. Yeah. Of course, US is going to uh, go through recession. Suffer, suffer at certain extent, right? It will, definitely. Not only US, UK and uh, those uh, giant economies, like the world, world economies will definitely suffer from all this. But uh, as you have uh, correctly mentioned, I, I am with you on that, that there are new players coming up in the arena. Mm -hmm. Like, just take that BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, Russia, China. India, China, there. I mean, if you, if you just look at that, you know, combination and that, that unity, these are very strategically important countries nowadays. Yep. Brazil has got a very, very, well, high potential uh, to be one of uh, the strongest economies in the world. It's, it's growing so fast. And uh, Russia, with its military, with its character, yeah. you know, like the, 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 the leader... The approach to the... Approach to the things, you know. And China, with its own unique approach, with a uh, uh, billion of population, yeah army yeah. well india was you know uh, very top intelligence I, I, it professionals and again a big population yeah. um you know yeah that's that's very important uh important uh, unity is uh, coming into existence now what do you think entrepreneurs should be thinking about these days what's what's their homework to do you know, this is a time when uh, you have to be able to save what you have mm -hmm. rather than multiplying or, you know, increasing numbers in your, in your investment. Now is a time when you just have to calm down a bit, you know, and wait what's going to happen. Wait and see. A little bit, yes. Wait. Don't relax too much, though. Is it, <laughs> is, is it like uh, end, uh, second quarter of next year? Is the... 
Mm, yeah, Re revisiting exactly. your position. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think that would be the right time. We we notice, uh, Mirshad, uh, a lot of movement of capital from different parts of the world towards uh, in the direction of North America. Uh, being a Canadian lawyer, I can say in, to Canada. What's your in your network? What what people are talking about? Uh, entrepreneur network. Why there's a flow of capital from even from Europe to North America? As we've just said, people, uh, well, US dollar, uh, I mean, North America, including Canada, is gaining more trust, uh, gaining more people's trust. Like uh, Canada, why Canada? Can Canada is a safe country and it's next to America. Okay, yeah. if America sneezes, Canada will start coughing. Yeah. Right. That's correct. So <laughs> that's why people think when they see America, they see uh, they they have no choice but they will see Canada too next to it, right? So um, and they trust U.S. dollar. <clears throat> In regards with uh, why money is coming to the U.S. Money and people I and think. people, yeah. land of opportunities multiplying opportunities mm. that well let's look at this from the other perspective nice. multiplying opportunities increasing you know um, the um, possibility of uh, becoming a millionaire yeah. it's easier to become a millionaire in the United States let me tell you that now you reminded me of a very interesting topic and since the brexit we have seen f the fifth prime minister I guess of United Kingdom. I think it's fourth. It's fourth, okay. Uh, Prime Minister Sunak, what, what's your expectations? What's your uh, projections in terms of his, uh, his reign as a Prime Minister? He's well, very well trusted now. Okay. He, he has, has gained his credibility. credibility. Of course, yeah. of course. Uh, it's gone up so much that I don't think it's going to be I don't think it's going to be easy to, uh, you know, to uh, downgrade him or, or, you know, to reduce the credibility uh, soon. He's a good public speaker. Okay. He's a sweet talker too sometimes. At the end of the day, he is a very good financial professional. Okay. He, he does understand numbers. He gets the numbers. He does, yeah. Wow. And uh, that is very important for, for the UK economy at the moment. Someone who does get the numbers who loves the numbers and who talk the same language. So I think Rishi Sunak is, is the right candidate at the moment. Well, thank you very much for a very interesting discussion. Say hi on our behalf to new or new, new Prime Minister Sunak. Oh, I will personally. <laughs> thank you very, thank much. You very much. Best thank of you. luck to Best you. Of luck. Thank, thank you. you.